Good afternoon, everybody. So I am Sogatan Roy. I am a PhD student in uh, Mechanical Engineering Department. Uh, today, uh, I am going to discuss, uh, as well as I am going to give you some uh, brief overview about the basics of travelogy. Okay. So uh, we will go into uh, detail step by step. So first of all, uh, you are from uh, a manufacturing class, right? And uh, uh, can I say, like, how many of you have heard this term, tribology? OK, three, two, four. Can I say, like, what do you know by tribology? Uh, is it the study of surfaces? Study of surfaces. Yeah, it's related to surface. Uh, there, somebody has raised, and what is tribology? What do you know about? Yeah, good. So, yeah, so tribology is, uh, a lot of things in tribology is done experimentally, correct? Uh, yeah, so let's see. So this is my today's uh, presentation, uh, origin uh, or definition of tribology. Then I will discuss about fundamentals of tribology. Mainly I will focus friction, wear, lubrication, as well as surfaces in contact and relative motion. And then I will discuss about encompassing fields. And finally, the summary. So what is tribology? So tribology comes from a uh, Greek word, which is called tribos. Tribos means uh, rubbing. And oology means the study of. So the tribology altogether means the study of two surfaces which are in relative motion. So suppose this is a surface and this is another surface. This two surface has some relative motion. So what are the things going on in between these two surfaces? This is the area called tribology. So tribology, you can see, it basically composed of three specific fields, <laughs> friction, lubrication, and wear, right? So these three fields are connected to each other, and overall, it the area called tribology. So uh, you, since you are from mechanical engineering, most of you, as well as you, have, you are in the junior year, so I hope you know about friction, right? So can I get some idea of what is friction? Anybody want to share what is friction or how friction generates? Resistance to movement. Yeah. Uh, resistance to movement. movement. Yeah, correct. So friction is basically resistance to movement. That, that's a nice way you can uh, explain what is friction. So friction is the resistance to motion uh, of one body moving against another. So when there is, this is suppose one body, this is another body, and this is trying to move against another, then the friction will generate in between those two surfaces. Now where, where is the loss of material due to motion? So when there is some kind of uh, reciprocating or linear, whatever kind of motion between two surfaces, there will be some wear going on. It might be less or it might be more. And lubrication, the use of fluid to minimize the friction and wear. So now if we think about friction, in some cases you need more friction, in some cases you need less friction. So suppose think about what are the cases you need more friction, like if you think about racing cars, when you hit the brake, the, there should be more friction between the wheel and the road. So the car needs to get stopped pretty quickly. So that's, that's why you need more friction. Why do you need less friction? That is like engine components. There are different components rubbing against each other. And if you have too many, too much friction, then the component will fail pretty quickly, right? So, so these are the areas where travelogies pay, pay their attention. Now, coming to surfaces in contact. So this is a circle and this is a plate. When we force the, the sphere, it comes in contact. So in bare eye, in general, people will think that all this surface is in contact with the plate. But if you try to see it microscopically, you can see that there are some specific points, those will be in contact. Like if you think any surface, it looks flat, but actually it's like this. And these are called roughness. Whereas the other surface is also like this. So there are some zones where these two will be in contact, right? So it's not like everywhere it's in contact. 
Now look at this one, where there are two surfaces in different motion. So you can see initially there are some red zones. These are the high zones, like these zones. So those gets flattened, and then the plate moves from one side to another side. So this is how uh, we need to think if you want to look at the phenomena in a more deeper and deeper way, in the sense like more microscopic way. Okay. Now coming to the application fields. So you you are now well about uh, know about what is tribology and what the areas it composed of, right? So if you think about the application fields. This consists of mainly two areas, like individual and assembly components, as well as manufacturing process. So let's think about individual and assembly components. Can, can you think any one or two component where this tribological knowledge is very much necessary? Can you raise your hand? Like one or two components where the individual or assembly components is necessary? Like you, you are from manufacturing class, right? So you know a lot much about uh, machines and all those things. <coughs> or maybe any manufacturing process. You have gone through different manufacturing process in this class, right? So what process do you think? Grinding. Huh? Grinding. Grinding, yeah. Grinding is a uh, process uh, where tribological knowledge is very necessary because you need to think about how much wear and tear is going on on the surface as well as the grinding wheel, right? Yeah. Any other process you think about? Milling. Yeah, milling. Milling is another manufacturing process. So uh, let's first discuss about individual components. You should you all know about gears, right? Like there are different types of gears, and you need to have pretty good idea about uh, like what kind of surface uh, phenomena is going on in between those mating to be a teeth. So you need to work with uh, like different lubricants and different material properties, different types of coatings and all to take care of gear tooth life. Now coming to uh, wind turbines, like in winter season, you know like uh, in wind turbines blades, ice can be uh, attached and it can reduce the life of the rotor blade, right? So what tribologists do, they try to uh, make different types of coating, like I, these are called ice phobic coatings, which basically hinders to adhere the ice with the blade, so the light will be improved, same as bearings. And these are used in m almost m all machineries, right? Now think about manufacturing process, like as he mentioned, in case of grinding, in case of milling, as well as in case of turning, you need to have those tribological knowledge, right? So here you can see there is uh, this is a lubricant going on. Uh, so you can see like too much lubricant is being used. So nowadays industries are trying to use as m m uh, like very minimum amount of lubrication so that the wastage of the lubricant is very small. And that is called minimum quantity lubrication. So that is also another field of tribology, right? Now coming to summary, so you can see this field is very interdisciplinary. It's not only just mechanical engineering or not only just material science and engineering. It composed of like mechanical engineering, materials, physics, chemistry, chemical engineering, and more. So if you work in a tribology-based company you should have your group mates or teammates from different fields, right? So it's a very interdisciplinary field. Also, the tribology is both technologically relevant and scientifically fascinating. Because nowadays there are multiple areas is coming out like nanotribology, biotribology, where you see microscopically and nanoscopically what are the things that are going on, right? In case of biotribology, you can think like in case of biomedical implants, how these uh, surface motions can affect. So altogether, it's a very exciting area to work. 